Welcome to Shaw, the Sound Healers Association, founded by Jonathan Goldman in 1982, bringing education and awareness of the use of sound and music for healing and transformation. Shaw features presentations by founding pioneers in the modern sound healing field, and we have a sound healing directory allowing you to list your work or find practitioners and teachers. There's a monthly online meeting, a blog, a fast resource of articles, and much more. Shaw, the Sound Healers Association, is dedicated to bringing harmony to the world of sound. Okay, here we go, and uh, we're jumping in now. And again, I'm Steve Farrell with Humanities Team. I'm here in Boulder, Colorado. I live near my dear friend, uh, Jonathan Goldman and his wife, Andy. And it's my pleasure to be here just to, just to introduce Jonathan and, uh, and Andy as this program starts. So, uh, and of course, this is a, a sound, a sad song, and it's a monthly program now that Humanities Team is really grateful to be producing each and every month with Jonathan and Andy. So thanks for being with us. I think you're going to have a fantastic time. Let me just uh, want to read a brief introduction here as we get started. So Jonathan and Andy Goldman are a powerful pair in the world of conscious living and sound healing. Jonathan is an internationally recognized authority, pioneer, and author in sound healing. Andy is a licensed psychotherapist who utilizes holistic treatment and sound healing. Both are highly respected leaders in the sound healing and spiritual music community. Andy and Jonathan have co-written two books together, Chakra Frequencies and The Humming Effect. And uh, again, I'll just share uh, when we came out a moment ago, Jonathan and I were, were sharing that sound healing is really taking off as it should because it is, as we're creating conscious living in the world, sound healing is, is a big role. Uh, it, it's an incredibly useful device and uh, you're looking at the man here, Jonathan Goldman, who got this whole thing started, was, he was called to it at an early age and hooray, uh, thank God he, he was, because uh, look where sound healing is today. And my pleasure, Jonathan, to uh, turn this over to you. Hello, my friends, and welcome, and thank you. This is the September Sound Satsang, and we've had a little technical difficulty, which means it's gonna be a really, powerful show. Mm. So we want to just say welcome to everyone and a special thank you to Humanities Team, to the Sound Healers Association, and to Steve Farrell for that beautiful introduction, and always to Healing Sounds, and to Garth, who is the man behind the curtain. And I have to just say, it really does take a village to put one of these programs together. And so we are delighted that everyone is here with us. Let's introduce ourselves. I am Jonathan <laughs> Goldman, and this is my beloved wife, Andy Goldman. And, and this is actually our special Fall Equinox Sound Satsang. And there's powerful time on our planet to have the change of seasons however even today i want to just mention that it is the international day of peace and it happens every year on the 21st of september yeah. so jonathan i am delighted that we're sort of segueing in with our uh fall equinox sound sat song with the international day of peace and part of what we're doing later on as you know is we'll be doing a global guided sound healing for the planet, which is perfect to align with all the different activities that are happening on this International Day of Peace. Give thanks. And mm. what else are we going to be doing? Well, what I'd like to do is give a brief overview to everyone on what we are going to cover tonight. Uh, we have been focusing in our recent sound sat songs on sacred sound. And we are going to continue our sacred sound theme topic tonight. And because it is the equinox, we are bringing a very special 
sacred sound to everyone tonight that we will be telling you all about. Yay. It is the divine name. The divine name, right. <laughs> and so we're going to delve deeply into the divine name, of course, how it came about and came into our lives. Totally. And uh, after that, we will have a beautiful video where we will actually be able to hear what the divine name actually sounds like. It's a series of vowel sounds in a particular sequence. And we will have an astrological assessment, as we always do. After that, we are going to do our global guided sound healing meditation for planetary and personal peace and healing. And so without further ado, Jonathan, I think we can get started. And, and our apologies again for that brief, that brief technical difficulty, but I think we're settled in now and ready to actually go. <laughs> and indeed, and for those who may be joining us for the first time, uh, what is a sound satsang? A sound satsang. We're dealing with the subject of sound. Satsang is either a community or it's a teaching, or it is somehow some sort of gathering to elevate consciousness, and we are all of the above. So we want to thank you all for being part of this wondrous, wondrous ascension-oriented gathering. Thank you, and it's uh, very, very powerful and very, very important because the divine name for me and for Andy is one of the most powerful sacred sounds that we have ever encountered. It's relatively new in terms of its rediscovery. Mm -hmm. And we're really looking forward to sharing some of this information with you tonight. It could be a life changer. Mm -hmm. and, and Jonathan, just to recap also a little bit, in our last, we do our sat songs every month. And the last couple of months we have focused on sacred sound. We've talked about different mantras. We've talked about last month, we, I believe, talked about the I am that I am and the, the Moses sound, code, the right? Moses code. And that was a sound that was transduced through Gaimatria, which is the uh, Hebrew uh, working mm -hmm. with numbers. N numerology, yeah. right. You know, very uh, Kabbalistic uh, mm -hmm. phenomena, if ever there was one before that, uh, the Merkava like, sound, yeah. then we dealt with mantras and all that stuff. So this is this is really interesting. This is another, believe it or not, another of the sacred sounds that Moses encountered on Mount Sinai or wherever he may have been talking to the burning bush, and yet it is a universal sound uh, because as we will discover, it is a sound made up entirely of harmonically ascending and descending vowel sounds. Mm -hmm. And for me, last month when we dealt with the, perhaps the discovery of the Moses Code, this was, as Andy said, it was gematria. It was just sort of working with numbers and my mind and my brain going, wow, these numbers do transcribe these frequencies. What does it sound like? Oh, that's really cool. With this one, as we'll talk about, it was really an energetic experience where literally I intoned the sound and everything changed because there was almost like a lightning bolt that came through me. More on that in a minute. Mm. And Jonathan, what I would love for you to do, because we have been very familiar with the divine name for many, many years, and it was way back, I think in 1996, that you first began to uh, come into, it came into consciousness, I will say. And you've got a great story around that, Jonathan, and let's hear it. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm gonna ask everyone to time travel with me with just a bit, to even before 1996, to somewhere in the 1950s when I am a young boy <laughs> and I am in synagogue because it was the high holy Jewish holidays, which it is right now. So blessings to everyone from all different traditions because we bless everyone because it's all sacred. And we continue on with that. And I, you know, I was looking at the, if you like, the Torah, and it was written in uh, 
in Hebrew. I couldn't actually read that. It had an English translation uh, next to it. One side of the page was Hebrew and the other. Uh, and I was not a Hebrew scholar then, nor am I now, but uh, literally somebody pointed at this cluster of four letters. And they whispered to me and said, do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? I said, no. They said, it's the secret name of God. It's so secret you can't pronounce it. Wow, I thought that's really, really cool. And I did think that was very, very cool, but that's about as far as it went until, take this 20 years later after that, maybe in the 1970s or even beginning in the 1980s, when uh, I began to study different forms of mysticism from all different traditions, from the Hindu tradition, the Buddhist tradition, the Christian tradition, all the different traditions, the Hebrew, the Kabbalistic system. And I, I found out in Kabbalah that there was indeed this four letter name. And the four letter name is called the Tetragrammaton, which is a Latin word for four letter name of God. And there is this four letter uh, name that basically was composed of four Hebrew letters. And um, bottom line was that somehow it had become lost. And so the pronunciation of this name was really unclear. Uh, a lot of people said the name was Yahweh, but then again, you have the actually the Latin pronunciation of this, which came from the Greek, and that was Jehovah. That's where Jehovah comes from. And then the sound of hallelujah is also came from this, if you like, vowel oriented sequence. Although at the time, I did not have a clue that there could have been a vowel oriented sequence because to my knowledge, Hebrew is a, just a consonant language with no vowels. So I, I couldn't figure this out until later. And in fact, in the, in the later part, we'll talk more about really the vowel oriented how and where and why this came from next month, which uh, is an extraordinary. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to actually teach everyone yeah. how to intone the divine name. But Jonathan, I, um, I believe that you had a dream. Right. So, you know, and if, I, I, think if that, I can yeah, continue, yeah, I uh, that dream, you know, Sarah, jumping around yeah. a little bit because they're time sequences. And I was uh, in New Hampshire at a sound colloquium that had hundreds and hundreds of people with about 40 to 50 really well-known teachers from throughout the planet. It was incredible. A fellow by the name of Jeff Volk. Those of you who know him, he uh, was very, very involved in helping bring cymatics to the consciousness of our planet. But Jeff Volk was the uh, fellow who orchestrated this whole thing. And on the way back from New Hampshire, I stopped off at the home of Sarah Benson, who Andy and I refer to her as the divine mother of sound healing and her husband, Don Beeman, who was a major Egyptian master, Tarot master, and a Kabbalistic master. So all these energies and I went to sleep. And when I woke up, I was told as I was coming from dream time to create a sequence of vowel sounds in a certain manner. And now I'm going to have to jump back 10 years before that to actually the spring equinox of 1986, where I was in deep meditation and I received the sequence of vowel sounds going from the root center up all the way through the seven centers, seven different vowel sounds, and they were harmonically related. And I used this system of vowel sounds in all of my books, including healing sounds and all of my CDs including chakra chants, I used a system of vowel signs and it went from the root all the way up in an ascending manner. And I could do this in my sleep. But when I was asked to start from the crown and go down to the root and then back up, I was clueless. I had to literally write out what the vowel sounds were for each of the chakras. And then I had to intone them. And two things happened. First one was that I felt the energy go from the crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, second, first, and then back up again. 
And it was incredible. I'd never done that as a phenomenon. And it was a vibrational thing, as I said, almost like a sonic lightning bolt uh, that came through me. And that was incredible. And I did the sound a couple of times. And the second time, I clearly became aware that the sound uh, that I was intoning sounded a whole lot like an extended Yahweh. And I'm going to give you just a little example of this. We'll be hearing this much more uh, readily in a uh, recording a video that we'll play in a little while. But for right now, I'm just going to give you an example. And as I do this, because I don't do any sacred sound without intent, my intention for this is to project a little bit of light and love and peace and harmony for this fabulous International Day of Peace as I make the sound. So hold on for a moment. So that was basically what I intoned when I intoned this sequence of vowel sounds, and it sounded a whole lot like Yahweh, but intoned as a harmonically related sequence of vowel sounds. And, and Jonathan, I want to say that, you know, this sounded like a very uh, involved, deep, complicated sound that you just intoned. But honestly, I want people to know that it was nothing but vowel sounds toned in a particular sequence. And we're going to delve more deeply into that particular uh, method. Later. But yeah, later. But but just as just a sequence and knowing that this that there probably are many different ways of sounding this four letter name this tetragrammaton many many different ways of doing it. this is one that i found and literally after this became made public through not only a recording that i did called the divine name but also a book uh, called the divine name we got a lot of feedback from people in different traditions throughout the planet and I went, whoa, this is considered a sacred sound from my people. And there'd be, you know, very esoteric uh, Native American ones or esoteric uh, Hindu or whatever. So it, it was quite affirming that this was a universal sound. And, and Jonathan, I know in 1996, when you shared this sound with me, we intoned this sound for quite a while and it was so powerful that we I think we just kind of conked, we conked out. out it was like, like <laughs> it and, and and that was back in 1996 and then after that Jonathan did a workshop in Oregon and he shared the divine name with two of our dear friends who are energy medicine doctors Jill and Meredith right and they too had the same type of experience powerful that Jonathan and I had both had now the interesting thing was that Jonathan I think you felt not quite ready to no. bring this to uh, the public. Right. And so you kind of sat on it for a while until... I sure. I, I, I wonder how long I was going to go looking at that before to see when our dear friend Greg Braden invited us to a workshop that he was doing in the Denver area that was on something called the God Code. And we were kind of clueless about that, actually. And we went to this workshop and Greg was dealing with the Tetragrammaton, the four letter name of God, he had transduced it into first going into the periodic table of elements, which was an amazing phenomenon, and then going into literally the DNA and came up with, if you like, a translation, which was God eternal within the body which is a phenomenal thing, you, you working with this method, and the idea being that the divine name, if you, if you like, was encoded into us on a literally a genetic DNA level. And that is really, and he's not the only person who has worked with that as a um, theory, as a phenomena, because it's, uh, there are a lot of people deep into the mysteries that talk about the divine name being encoded into the body. And we had dinner, and I said, 
Greg, you know, I may have discovered how to actually create the sound. It's been lost for 3,000 years, something like that, for whatever reason. And um, I think I may have discovered it. And I'm willing to make a recording for you if you make sure that nobody does any recordings of it so it just maintains itself in your workshop. And he said, great, fine. And for the first few weeks, that's what happened. And then... And then all of a sudden we started uh, getting phone calls and uh, ended up knowing that it had gotten out on the internet. Somehow inadvertently, perhaps someone didn't, uh, you know, turn off the recorder or whatnot, but it was there on the internet. And I was like, um, okay, if this is going to happen, then I want to honor this incredibly sacred sound by presenting the most powerful, most wonderful, best fidelity sound that I uh, can create, which I did. And uh, you'll be hearing this later. And this is uh, from the uh, rec recording that I work with Greg doing the uh, liner notes called The Divine Name Sounds of the God Code. So uh, we're going to be uh, sharing that soon after. Uh, I want to say, say a word, Annie, for just a moment about, um, <laughs> you know, where does this have to do with Moses and uh, the burning bush? And I'm going to basically hear, this is the fabulous divine name book, and I am going to read from it because last month we dealt with one of the names that Moses basically received from the burning bush, the I am that I am. And if you like, this is a descriptive term of I am everything. Who should I say? Uh, and I am everything. But then, so I'm going to read to you now from a translation of the text of that sequence from the New Jerusalem Bible which uses where it is appropriate, because there are many different names of God, believe it or not, in the Torah, in the Old Testament. But where the name Yahweh is used, or the, you know, the written, the, the tetragrammaton, the yod Hey vod Hey, they use the term Yahweh. So this is what the text reads. God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, this is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God further said to Moses, you are to tell the Israelites, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name for all time, and thus I am to be invoked for all generations to come. I'm going to read that again. This is my name for all time, and this I am to be invoked for all generations to come. So literally, the divine tells Moses this is his name, his personal name, and this is how he is to be invoked. And apparently, as noted, for quite a while, this name was known and used, and then somehow it became lost, prohibited and lost, and... Uh, I like to believe that the sonic uh, experience that I had may have been the opening of a portal to working with this hotline to the divine. Mm. And we are going to be uh, giving you an opportunity shortly to actually hear uh, this divine name, what it actually sounds like. And what I would like to do, speaking of, of Greg and how, you know, the two of you really worked so together in getting out the divine name sounds of the God code. And, and then I do want to just read a brief, a brief quote from, from Greg, uh, from Jonathan's book, The Divine Name. Which is, if you're looking for it, you can find it on the Healing Sounds website. Just <laughs> want to let you know, because it's but, kind of hard to get. But, but this, the reason that I want to read this particular quote is because it pretty much sums up what we're talking about. And Greg says the experience of hearing the divine name, the experience of actually hearing the divine name carries a special and unique significance. 
because it is intoned as vowels that unite rather than consonants that divide, the divine name is truly a universal sacred sound. It transcends languages, borders, bloodlines, beliefs, and lifestyles. And so I wanted to share that because when you hear this sound, it is truly a universal experience, really. Yeah. And, sure. and of course, at this point in time, we have taught the divine name in hundreds and hundreds of people and workshops and so forth. And, and, so, and it's non-denominational. We've taught it in ashrams, churches, yeah, synagogues, yeah, yeah, yeah. you name it. And it's been really well received because once you experience it, it is real. And you don't need to have a belief of any tradition or anything like yeah. that if you experience this hotline to the divine. That, that's right. And, and of course, tonight we're really kind of giving you the, the backstory on how the divine name came into our lives. And next sat song, we are going to delve more deeply and teach you how to make this sound too. So Nice. And uh, once again, what you're going to be listening to here are simply four harmonically related vowel sounds to take the energy from the crown, to the heart, to the root, and then ultimately back up with the crown. And I would like to suggest that you close your eyes and experience it as you listen to it. But at the same time, a fabulous visual artist by the name of Timothy Higgelson has created some incredible, just really fluid, if you like, um, mind altering visuals. So if your eyes are open, you'll see some stuff that's pretty cool. And if they're closed, you'll see some stuff that is pretty cool. And uh, I'd like to suggest that as we get ready to hear the divine name, you allow this extraordinary sacred sound to resonate with you and perhaps allow and enable all sorts of light and love to sound, to manifest and occur. Mm. And what you're going to actually be hearing is uh, Jonathan intoning the divine name. I will be playing uh, my rose quartz crystal bowl. So you'll hear that sound. And we just hope that you uh, just Tune in and enjoy this experience. Totally. So, blessed be.
Well, welcome back. That's always such a profound experience. It really merits a bit of silence and meditation. So I'm mm. just going to take a moment mm. and trust that everyone has had a similar experience. And Timothy's visuals are very cool, too. Mm. And we always do like to be in silence for a, a moment or two. Uh, so just as we come back into this space, uh, what a beautiful sound, sacred sound to have on the fall equinox, Jonathan. Yeah, and I'm just, if anyone hadn't, anybody uh, <laughs> had any really interesting experiences, uh, please send them to us at info at healingsounds.com because mm. we, we just love them. We have a file folder full of people who have uh, had just transformational experiences just listening to this. Mm. And so we're open to that. So thank you. Mm, thank you. So. Hey, Andy, it is now time <laughs> for the great. Yes, yes. So speaking of uh, having the sacred sound on this powerful time of the fall equinox, I do want to just say happy equinox to everyone. And the actual uh, equi equinox is happening day after tomorrow. So we're in the equinox energy right now, but it actually happens on Saturday, September 23rd, uh, in the wee hours of the morning at 12.49 a.m. 12.49 a.m. Wow. 12, that's 10 till 1. Ah! <laughs> Mountain time that is. That's mountain okay. time. Wow. That's thank you for that, Jonathan. Yes, that is mountain time. So you want to adjust your uh, time zone definitely. And of course, we are talking about here in the northern hemisphere. It is the fall equinox. In the southern hemisphere, it is the spring equinox. And with both days, it really is. It's a time of equal day and equal night and of course when we think about equal day and night it brings in it highlights balance and i uh, want us to think about balance for a minute and the equinox the fall equinox is also the time where the sun enters the sign of libra and Libra is all about balance. And in fact, the symbol of Libra is a scale. And so as you know, as I was putting all these pieces together, I went, aha, let us weigh in on the balance in our own lives. And let's check in and are we experiencing balance or are we perhaps out of balance in different areas of our lives? And you know, we can just check that out. And uh, if you're out of balance, what do you need to do to get into balance? And so with the um, equinox coming in, it's, it's really ushering in a new season. And whenever we have a change of seasons and we are tuned in to nature, which I would encourage everyone to do during this equinox time. But when we are changing seasons, we do have the opportunity to really sort of step back and pause and reflect because we're going from the bounty and the energy of the summer and we are now coming into the fall of the year. And now one of the beautiful things when we are tuned into nature, nature supports us really uh, tuning in. And as we observe nature, we can also observe our own inner nature. And with the fall equinox, we see the leaves falling from the trees the changing colors of the autumn. And we are noticing that nature is beginning to kind of make that turn into 
toward those winter months. And so it really gives us a chance to begin to look at what's happened in our lives in these last three months since the summer solstice and giving thanks for the bounty and this now is the time of harvest and in fact the fall equinox traditionally is the time of harvest and in the ancient days or probably not even that long ago <laughs> but <laughs> it was the time where the crops the summer crops were prepared and and put away so that there would be food for the winter and uh you know, as I think about the harvest, I think about hmm, what all has happened in our own lives these past several months and how we can harvest those important learnings and so forth. And of course, always we think about the harvest moon. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but in, in olden days, the harvest moon, it was very bright and it the harvest moon is always the full moon closest to the equinox and so that allowed the farmers to stay out much much later than normal and could prepare and harvest all of their crops and so our harvest moon the one that is in current time, <laughs> not the olden times, but our harvest moon is actually coming up on Friday, September 29th. And our harvest moon is a super full moon and it is the fourth super moon of the year. And when we do have a super moon, what happens is that the moon's orbit is closest to the earth and it is affecting the gravitational pull of the earth and so interestingly we are part of the earth of course <laughs> I guess. and so as as the earth's pull from the moon is being affected by the gravitational pull think about what that is doing to us because we are part of the earth we are on the earth and so our gravitational pull is being affected so our emotions and our psyches this is a very powerful time probably all the water in our body absolutely too. absolutely and the chemicals and all that stuff <laughs> and and because this is such a, a powerful time we just want to be aware of that and you know i bring this to one's attention because it's just helpful to have this information because when those energies really get a bit chaotic and i will say that this super moon is in the sign of aries and aries is a fire sign it's a an energetic sign uh, it's speedy and it's dynamic and it can also be restless and impatient and so knowing this when we're feeling this energy of the equinox and the harvest moon and we're in the the equinox energy and we may get a little impatient we can go hey hey i'm not going to go there because i know what's happening it's the gravitational pull of the moon <laughs> affecting me so we have choices that we can make and lastly uh what i'd like to say astrologically speaking the all five of the major outer planets are retrograde and that is saturn that is jupiter uranus neptune and pluto and when planets are retrograde they really operate on an introspective level and now when i was putting all this together i thought well this is great because that introspective level can actually help us as we are pausing and we are reflecting at this very powerful change of the season of going from summer into fall and we are preparing now then next time to go into winter so as we pause and reflect on this 
equinox, this fall equinox. It's also a time of, of giving thanks and sending out blessings to everyone. And Jonathan, I think this is a beautiful time for us to segue into our guided meditation, our global guided meditation for planetary and personal healing. And we can set the intention of holding the energy right. of gratitude for all that we have harvested in our own lives. And I'm going to add one last thing. It's not by accident that there are so many different holidays from so many different mm -hmm. traditions mm -hmm. happening right now. This is a powerful portal time. So on this particular international day of peace, where a lot of people are consciously working with the idea of feeling and embodying peace, please join in on this video. For those who've done it before, it's one of the highlights. Uh, we literally sound together after a wonderful guided meditation that Andy does. It creates heart brain coherent so that our field is even larger and greater and more powerful. And then when it's time to do the ohms together, please join in. We may not be able to hear each other on a physical level, but etherically, we can mm -hmm. sense ourselves. And for all the people who are going to be doing this in the future, because time and space are just illusions of a lower mind, this is all happening simultaneously. We are and we can make a difference. So yeah and yeah. what i'd like to say too is that as jonathan just mentioned do sound along when we get to the portion of the guided meditation where we are beginning to do a series of ohms and we're going to be doing some breathing exercises and uh, really focusing on coherence between our hearts and our brain and that happens when we are in gratitude, when we are in appreciation, when we have those feelings of, of positivity. So I set that intention for our guided meditation tonight. And um, let us all resonate together now in light and love through sound. Garth, if you would, sir, we're ready. The purpose for this meditation is to project a sound encoded with the energies of light and love and project healing to the Gaia Matrix, our beloved planet Earth. We will first create coherence between our heart and our brain. This effect will further be amplified by the power of the own that you will be toning along with later, bringing more light and love into your body, mind, and spirit for health and wellness. And now, begin to focus on your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. Slowly, Breathing in and out. And as you're breathing in and out, imagine or visualize that you're breathing in and out through your heart. As you're breathing in and out through the area of your heart, remembering that it is love that breathes each breath. And it is love that causes each beat of our heart. Continue breathing slowly, breathing in and out in this manner. And now I'd like you to call to mind something that has brought you a great deal of appreciation, gratitude, something that you are feeling very good about. This might be an experience with another person. Perhaps it's a beautiful sunset. It may be a beloved pet, a spouse. 
but it is something that has brought you loving kindness and gratitude and appreciation. And as you're breathing in and out through your heart, feeling this appreciation, feeling this gratitude, you're creating a beautiful coherence between your heart and your brain. And your heart, through this coherence, is expanding, getting larger and larger, and connecting with all the heart and loving energy on our planet in this moment. This is just a wonderful way of creating a very powerful heart activation and you'll be amplifying this with the sound of the OM. Continue breathing slowly and deeply while feeling appreciation and gratitude and imagining your breath going in and out through your heart. Now, visualize this energy and begin to sense a radiant light around you that is permeating every cell of your body and resonating your heart chakra. In a moment, we'll begin to gently sound forth with the power of the OM. And as you do this, visualize the planet Earth as a holographic image floating in front of you. Imagine bathing the earth in a healing field of light and love that you are creating through your sacred sound. Now, let us begin to make the heart sound of the OM, bringing the energy of global harmonization, peace and healing to our beloved planet, Earth.
last time. Now, being in silence, visualizing all the light and love through sound that you have manifested, resonating and bringing to earth and yourself to a deep state of healing. And when you feel ready, open your eyes and know that you have contributed to personal and planetary healing. You're back. <laughs> kind of very, very powerful. Thank you all for helping co-create that um, really, really powerful. And we are grateful. And, um, yeah. Yes. And thank you all for being with us tonight. And uh, we will be back again next month. And Jonathan, what are the dates next month? It's going to be Tuesday, October Tuesday. 24th at 7 o'clock. And it's actually, as today is, if you like, International Day of Peace, that is the conclusion of the fabulous Global Wonder Summit. We're actually going to be probably doing the concluding piece with our presentation, which is going to basically be talking about uh, the divine name, mm -hmm. Uh, as vowel sounds and the oneness of vowel sounds. So, and among other things, we're going to be seeing some extraordinary videos of the cymatic pictures of the divine name, aura photographs of it, just uh, some amazing stuff. Yeah. So we're, we're really going to delve deep into it, and it's going to be a, a special special time mm. so we all look for we hope you'll come back and join us and really just want to wish everyone not only a international day of peace but also a very happy equinox we are in this beautiful change of the season powerful energy with the super full moon and just know that we are sending you all blessings of love and light through sound until we meet again <laughs> keep lots of love and light through sound in your hearts to create balance to create oneness to just do all those wondrous things that we were meant to be here for thank you so much for sharing your precious time with us on the, at this most auspicious time so we are grateful and hey thank mm. you and we'll see you next month and uh oh happy equinox <laughs> happy equinox happy international day of peace bye-bye <laughs>